Hey, so I guess you've clicked on this video as you're a tennis player looking to improve your game or you're a parent or a coach looking to help a player improve their game. Well, you're in the right place as I honestly believe that this video is gonna be the most valuable video that I've made for you so far as I'm gonna show you how you can fix any shot in tennis. Let's get into it. Now, the way I've structured this video is I've broken it down into four sections. These are the four levels of competency, which you may have heard before, as they're important for any type of learning. But of course, in this video, I've steered it around developing your tennis skills. The four stages are unconscious incompetency, conscious incompetency, conscious competency, and unconscious competency. Don't worry, I'll explain what each of those means. The first one, being unconsciously incompetent simply means that you don't know what you're doing wrong yet. And at some point in our tennis, no matter what level we're at, we're going to be unconsciously incompetent at something. All this means is that there is a weakness within our game that we're unaware of at the moment. And our first mission to get to stage number two is to become consciously incompetent. This simply means that you know what you're doing wrong. Now, when it comes to tennis, there are a couple of ways that you can figure this out. Number one is have somebody tell you, whether that be a coach or a peer, or two is to do the digging yourself. And the best way to do this is to video yourself playing, ideally in a tennis match. Now, watching yourself play and figuring out what you're doing wrong is easier said than done. And so my top tip for you is to try to focus on the ball rather than yourself when you're playing, because it's the ball that beats your opponent, not your technique. Now, when you're looking at the ball, you wanna be looking for consistency, first of all. Are you able to get each shot in play? If you've got a really consistent forehand, but an inconsistent backhand, then that might be the area that you need to look at. Once you're happy with consistency, you might want to look at where that ball lands. Is it deep? Is it putting your opponent under pressure? If there's a certain shot in your game that's lacking when it comes to effectiveness, then that might be the shot to focus on. Once you've dialed into a certain shot or situation that you want to work on, then it's a case of looking for the root of the problem. And this is where most players go wrong, as it's very easy to go straight into looking at the technique and the shapes of your shots and comparing them to the pros. And even some coaches go wrong here. In fact, I got fooled by this once before as well. I was 16 years old and on my very first coaching qualification, and the tutor asked me what was wrong with his backhand. He did this. I was looking at his grips, his shape of swing, his positioning and stance, and came up with what I thought was a really clever answer. But he told me I was wrong. He told me he was aiming to hit a drop shot. And so rather than jumping into something technical, figure out if the intention is right in the first place. You may have been missing your backhand simply because you had the wrong intention. So the first thing you should always look for is your shot selection. Now, if it is your shot selection, which is the problem, fine, you can work on it. You've now become consciously incompetent. But if you feel that your shot selection is good, but you're still making mistakes, that's when you need to start looking at the four R's. Are you ready for the oncoming ball? Are you reading it well? Are you reacting effectively? And are you recovering well? If you watch yourself back and realize that your ready position is pretty poor, then that's what you've got to work on. If your ready position is good, but you seem like your spacing's not so great, then that's something you need to work on. But go through this checklist, and I would say that 90% of you will find something that you can work on. But if you're doing the four R's well, that's when it gets a little bit more technical. And when we start to look at the kinetic chain. Now, I'm not gonna go too deep into this because this video could become an hour long. But what I would say is when looking at technique, you want to start at your feet and work up your body parts through the bigger muscle groups before you start looking at what your arm is doing. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to make a video specifically on the kinetic chain. But for now, I'm gonna assume that you've figured out what you're doing wrong. And we're gonna move on to the next stage where we take our conscious incompetence to conscious competence. So now that you know what you're doing wrong, you've already improved your skill level. An example is if you realize that your forehand is dropping short, just by knowing that you're going to be aiming deeper. However, if there's something technical in the way that you need to work on to get it deeper, this is where it's at. When it comes to working on this given skill that you want to develop, it's always most difficult to make an adjustment in open play point play. What you'll probably find is you'll start overthinking, you'll start getting tight and pushy, and it affects the rest of your game. In which case, you may need to close things down a little bit to get more volume and repetitions in. Now, you can do this by getting your hitting partner to try to aim to a certain part of the court so that you can practice the situation, or you can use a ball machine. This is the best way to give yourself a number of repetitions. However, 
as you know, is less realistic than playing a point. So anywhere possible, try to make it more realistic by adding a recovery and mixing up where the ball feeds to. Your main aim in this phase of becoming consciously competent is to work back towards playing points whilst practicing this skill. This stage is probably the most effort out of all of the stages as you really have to put the work in. My best advice is if you're doing lots and lots of repetitions, whether that be with a ball machine or a hitting partner hitting the same ball back to you, time and time again, is to move into rally play as soon as you can. And once you get comfortable doing your skill within a rally, that's when you bring it back into point play. You could start on a half court and then open up to a full court, but your aim is to go from a closed practice to an open practice. Now, when you're in this phase and you're playing really, really well, when your partner's feeding you the ball, but you play terribly when it comes to match play, then it still needs work. But don't worry, that's part of the process. Everybody feels the same. My best advice here is to try to play more practice points. As in practice points, you're gonna feel slightly less pressure so you can play freely and practice the skill that you're trying to develop. Now let's assume you've put the work in and you're feeling pretty confident that you can now do the skill that you've been working on. You are now consciously competent, meaning that when you're thinking about it, you can do it. The final stage is to try to get to a state of unconscious competence. That means that you can do the skill without thinking about it. And this takes time. If you imagine a professional tennis player when they're hitting their ground strokes, 99% of their game is unconscious competence. They're not thinking about their forehand or backhand technique when they're playing. They're gonna be thinking about their game plan, which is a state that you want to get to, but it does take time. And even the pros work on their game. So when they're in between matches on the training court, they go back through these competency stages, just like you and I. But anyway, how do we get to the final level of unconscious competence? Your aim should be to reduce the amount of time that you're thinking about the skill that you've developed during point play. And the key here is to keep it simple. If you've been working really hard on your spacing to help you to get your forehand to go deeper, then trust the fact that you've put the work in beforehand and just focus on the depth of your forehand rather than your spacing. If you've put enough work in, this will come out in your match play. Now, remind yourself as much as you need to. It might be at the start that you need to remind yourself of hitting your forehand deep before each point, but eventually you should be able to get to a stage where you're doing it just at the change of ends or even just before you step on for the match. But once you feel happy that you've developed the skill and you don't have to think about it so much, don't get complacent as when you're tired or tight, your bad habits will still come out. And so try to keep on top of it within your training sessions, checking in from time to time and try to video your matches once in a while so that you can check up on it as well. And so there is a simple framework that I like to follow when helping my players to improve any given skills. First, you need to know what you're doing wrong. Then you need to get the repetitions in, then opening it up into match play before slowly reducing the amount of time you spend thinking about it. Let me know in the comments below if there's any parts of this video that you want me to dive deeper into, or if you've got any questions. And if you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.